What's going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and welcome back to the 2D tower defense tutorial. Now in the last episode we added in an enemy that will follow our path all the way to the end. Now you'll see here he just comes in and he'll follow the path all the way until he gets to the end. Now that's pretty cool but we, we want to make him red spawn in a endless wave sort of manner now currently our enemy is just an enemy but we did turn him into a prefab so we can actually come in here and delete the enemy now i just want to do one thing to tidy up my scene here now i want to go into the assets create a new folder and call this the code and then in here i'm going to create a new folder called scripts and i'm just going to move all my scripts into the scripts folder and there you go that makes it a lot easier to see so now I'm going to add our spawner script to our level manager here. So up here, I'm going to create a enemy spawner and actually create and add him to our level manager of game object. Now, once this compiled, let's double click this to open it up in Visual Studio. And you can see here we the, well, we moved our script, so they're going to be in the wrong place. That's fine. Now, we want to do a couple things in the enemy spawner. The first thing is we want a integer so let's let's create a header which we call attributes um and we want a let's say private so we're going to serialize the field a private integer and we're going to call this our we'll call this an integer and we're going to set this to be called our base enemies now this is going to be set to eight by default i feel like that's a good starting amount of enemies you're going to have eight enemies coming to attack you at once we also want a serialized private int which is going to be or sorry float which is going to be the enemies per second and we're going to set this to something like 0.5 to start with which is going to be quite slow we then want a another header which we are going to call our references this is just to neaten it up ref uh, there we go that's how you spell references um and in here we're going to want a serialized game or oh, a serialized private game object array called our enemy prefabs now the reason we're going to make this array is because we're going to have multiple enemies in the future that we're going to be able to spawn um but we're just going to currently start out with a singular enemy but we'll have multiple in the future which will randomly get we're then going to want a private field and we're going to have this an integer called the current wave which we're going to set to one by default the current wave is going to keep track of the wave we're on and every single time we defeat all the enemies it will then start a new wave after a set amount of seconds so we're going to create another serialized private float called time between waves which we're going to set to something like five seconds giving you five seconds to get ready for the next wave now you can tweak this and make it either longer or shorter if you want to make it more challenging uh, but we're just going to leave this at five now we want enough of private float that's going to keep track of when we last spawned an enemy so we're going to say time since last spawn and we're just going to leave that as null for now because that will allow our first enemy to spawn immediately now in here we need a few more things we're going to need a we need a private int called enemies alive now this is going to keep track of how many enemies are currently alive and we also need another one saying private int enemies left to spawn which will tell us how many enemies are left to spawn now in our start method here we just want to say enemies left to spawn is equal to our base enemies however we're going to be doing some math so each wave this is going to get exponentially harder now to do that we're going to create a private void and we're going to call this um enemies per wave now in here we want to say we or we actually want to part return an integer from this and we want to say return base enemies times and we also want to say math f dot round to int and we want to say base enemies times by the current wave 
to the power, which we can say mathf.pow. So we want to get the wave to the power of, and we're going to just give 7.5. Now, actually, I'm going to create a variable for this, which is going to be in our attributes. And we'll create a private float called scaling factor or difficulty scaling factor. And we're going to set this to 0.75f. Now, the higher this number is, the quicker or the more enemies it will spawn per wave. Now, for wave one, this should give us eight enemies, which will be our base enemies. For the wave two, this should give us around 11 or 12 or something similar. Now, to do this, let's just get out the calculator and I'll show you how this function works. So, what we're going to have is our base enemies, which is eight, times by the current wave. So, let's just start off by one to the power off um, and we're gonna say 0.75 which you're gonna see gives us eight but now if we try let's say do two so eight times the power or the current wave which is gonna be two to the power of 0.75 should give us something like okay there you go 13.45 which overall will round to 14 enemies so you can see this is gonna scale quite quickly from eight enemies to 14. And as each wave continues on, or e at each wave, this number will get even harder and harder and harder. For example, if we just go eight times, let's say wave 10 to the power of 0 0.75, which is our scaling factor, you're gonna get 50 or 45 enemies because we're gonna be rounding this number up. And that's gonna give us 45 enemies by wave 10. So now what we wanna do is at the start, we can just pass in enemies per wave and just call this. This should allow us to basically start a wave. Now I'm actually gonna rename this to start wave um, because I wanna call a function every single time to let us know we're ready to start the wave. Now, finally, I just want to create one more variable, and this is going to be is spawning, and we're going to set this equal to false to start with. But then once it is spawning, we can say is spawning is equal to true inside of our start wave function. So when we start the wave, it will call all of this. Now, inside of an update method, we I'm going to also move this further down so it's below um, the Unity uh, lifecycle methods here. Um, and inside the update we're gonna to wanna to actually run all of this to actually start spawning our enemies. So we just wanna say if, actually to start with, we wanna say um, time since last spawn is plus equal to time dot, time dot delta time, which will just add time, over, well, basically this will just go up in roughly seconds. Then what we can do, we can say if time since last spawn is greater than or equal to the enemies per second, or sorry, one divided by the enemies per second, then we can spawn our enemies. So this is gonna say once every X amount of time we wanna spawn. Now, while we're here, I just wanna say if is spawning is false so if spawn is false we're just going to return out of this for now this means if we're not spawning nothing's going to run in here which means we won't spawn enemies now we should just be able to debug dot log in here spawn enemy and this should roughly uh only be called once every uh two seconds because one divided by 0 0.5 is two now as the wave goes on um, we can increment this to one, um, two, three, four enemies per second, and you'll see this will start getting quicker and quicker. But to start with, we're going to set off slow, and then each wave will make them get exponentially harder, just like we do with this. But we'll add that in later. For now, we'll just have a look at this. Let's go back to Unity and let the scripts compile. Now, we can ignore these warnings for now because we're, we're going to use those soon. I just wanted to have them in there ready. If we go back to level manager, you can see this is all here. We can also set our default enemy prefab. Now, obviously, we've just called this enemy, but in the future, we'll probably have like normal enemy, hard enemy, or slow or tank enemy, which can take more shots but walk slower. A speed enemy, which comes real quick but takes less shots. You know, the sort of standard things you'll get uh, with enemies. So now, if we just hit play, we should see that in our console at the bottom here, we should 
get guys i've just realized i forgot to do just quickly in our start method call start wave to actually start the first wave um obviously in your game you'll probably want a menu and when you hit start it then starts the wave but for now we're just going to call it in the start wave so as soon as this game starts it will start running or you probably want a coroutine when you first start to say only start the game after like first five seconds but let's just hit play and this should hopefully now say spawn enemy there you go you can see if that didn't just jump across it's spawning enemies so you're gonna see this is infinitely spawning enemies right now really quickly that's because i've made an error and now once we get here we want to set time to last spawn back to zero this is going to reset every single time we spawn an enemy because currently this it once this gets to true this is going to be always true and obviously that means our spawn enemies be called every frame which was an error on my part we just need to make sure we reset that there now hopefully Hopefully this time it should be a lot more spoof and we should see that this there you go you see spawn enemy spawn enemy is roughly every two seconds you see this was 53 55 57 59 oh nine uh, the next one oh one oh three oh five you can see it's every two seconds that's going to spawn enemies now we also inside of here are probably going to create a spawn enemy function or void or method and we'll just say private void spawn enemy and this is where we'll just call our debug.log for now which we're going to say spawn enemy and then below this once we've spawned our enemy we're just going to want to say we want to call enemies left to spawn minus minus and in our um this will slowly take them down but we also want to say enemies alive plus plus now these both are going to be useful to let us know different scenarios in our game the enemy once this gets to zero that means there's nothing left to spawn however that doesn't mean the wave is over that just means we do not want to spawn any more enemies so we want to actually make a check in here to check if we should spawn now in here, I just want to say and double ampersand, and then we want to say enemies left to spawn is greater than zero. If enemies left to spawn is greater than zero, then we can continue to spawn enemies. Otherwise, if this is not greater than um, zero, or if this is less zero or less, so basically once this gets to zero, this will stop spawning, meaning there's no more enemies left to spawn. But that doesn't mean the game is over or the wave is over. The wave will end once all our enemies are killed. So you can see here, we are adding in enemies alive, to let our script or game know that we've got some enemies still alive later on once we kill our enemies or destroy our enemies we will then minus this away and obviously once this gets to zero we'll start a new wave now now we've done this let's actually start spawning our enemies so i'm just going to we're going to have a game object which is going to be prefab to spawn now normally i would do a random feature here and get us a random enemy but because we only have one enemy for now we're just going to say enemy prefabs and we're just going to get number zero which is going to be the only enemy we currently have in there we then want to go in here and just say instantiate a new uh, prefab to spawn we want to get our starting point and if you remember in the last video we set up the level manager to have a starting point we then want to say quaternion.identity because this will spawn it at its current rotation this should also be position because our start point is a transform so this will spawn our enemy at the top and that's all we need to do for now for our spawn enemy later on this will become a little bit more complex but this works for now so let's see if well let's see if it actually works in game so what we want to do is just come up to the top here and hit play and then we can see it should start spawning eight enemies there's one and let's just uh demaximize this so we can actually come out here and see them all coming in so now we have three enemies four and hopefully inside of our attributes this is going down but we won't be able to see it until it's all done so you can see we've got multiple enemies there is four five six seven eight we now have eight enemies 
on the field now if we come up here and turn debug mode on you should see enemies alive eight and once they get to the end and get destroyed the unfortunately it doesn't it no longer um well you can see here enemies alive is still equal to eight and as they die nothing happens so that's where we're going to now add in a um the ability to kill our enemies so to do that we want to say using unity engine dot defense systems and then just above our references here or actually you know let's do it below and we'll call this we'll create a header called offense and we want to create an event called um we'll create a new public static unity event which i currently don't have because i've used event systems and this should just be unity engine dot offense so now i should be able to create a new unity event called um enemy killed or on enemy destroy now in the start method of our offense or actually let's create an awake method because we want this to be instantiated quite early on we want to say on enemy destroy dot add listener and in here we want to create a function which we can just make a private function down here called private void on our uh, enemy destroyed and let's just take this and put that in there now this means every time on enemy destroyed is called we are going to call these functions here which is enemy destroyed now in here we just want to say um enemy oh sorry we actually it's actually called enemies alive we just want to set this to minus minus this means we're going to call this anytime we destroy our enemy now we want to go into our code and our enemy movement here because we actually start the first destroy here when we get to the end we destroy our game object so before we destroy our game object we just want to get the reference to unity fn on enemy destroy so we just want to say enemy spawner dot on enemy destroy dot invoke now this will call this function straight away this will tell our enemy spawner that we want to call this which will call the listeners we've applied called destroy enemy and that should minus our enemies so let's now check that is working now we're going to keep our debug mode on so we can actually see this here um hopefully everything should be good and we should just be able to go straight into it. our enemy should just be ready to go as well um yep so let's go back to our level manager we see and i'm going to turn up the actual enemy speed so in here movement speed let's just pull it a something ridiculous like 10 to make him go a lot faster we'll also go to our spawner and set the enemies per second to let's say two per second so that's going to make them a lot quicker so let's just hit play and then we should see a bunch of enemies come in oh we need to de maximize this screen oh and we have an error enemy spawner 27 which is here on enemy destroy add listener enemy destroyed okay guys so the error we're getting is because we haven't actually initialized our unity offend we're just expecting it to know what it is but currently this is equal to null so adding a listener isn't going to do anything to fix that we could go in here and just say new unity offend like this or we can come in here in the awake method and also call this but for now this will work as intended now and hopefully this should fix our error so let's actually try and run this one last time oh, so let's select our level manager hit play and we should see really fast enemies coming flying through our wave there we go you can see they're coming all the way through and we still have enemies alive eight and you can see seven six five four three two one and now we are at zero we have no more enemies left alive meaning we can end the wave and get ready to start the next one so inside of our enemy spawner we now need to go back to the awake method and below the spawning what we're going to do is say if enemies alive is equal to zero and enemies left to spawn is equal to zero then we can end the wave and we're just going to call a function called end wave now let's create another private void called end wave and inside of here we just want to say is spawning equal to false 
we want to reset our time since last spawned. So we can make sure it's zero. So when we start the next wave, it will error. We now want to actually call some sort of coroutine to then start uh, the next wave. So what we're going to do is turn start wave into an IE numerator, which will allow us to call this inside of a, um, a coroutine. Now we need to actually do something here and we need to say yield return new wait for seconds and we want to pass in some sort of value in seconds here now we could we can actually take our time between waves and put this in here just to basically say we're only going to start this between our waves then inside of start our method here we can say start coroutine and we can pass in our start wave there this will now call us our wave. We can also copy this and go back to end wave and call this in end wave. So once the wave ends, it will restart within 10 seconds. Or sorry, five seconds is what we've got set between our waves. And then when this restarts, it should give us more enemies and more things to see. So let's allow this to now run. Let this start. Now you should notice is spawning will not start straight away. So let's just hit play and let's just see what happens. We should, is spawning is not. And then after five seconds, if we be patient, you can see that's now started and our enemies are flowing through. Now, once these enemies alive get to zero, we should see is spawning turn off again. And there you go, but it's turned off. Now, if we wait another five seconds, we should see new things. But you can see enemies left to spawn should increase. However, it seems to be stuck at eight. And the reason being is because we haven't actually increased our current right wave. That's my bad. So inside of our end wave, we just want to say wave current wave is plus plus this will just increase our wave before we start the next one now finally we should have a working system that spawns enemies over time and it gets more and more difficult now you're probably going to want to increase the time between waves and have some sort of countdown that you turn on um, but for now this will do you can see here time per left to spawn eight oh now once these are all dead we should hopefully see this come up to about 15 enemies or 14 enemies once this starts spawning again and there you go you can see we got 13 14 enemies there i believe let's have a look how many it actually gives us oh they're dying before we get to the end but you can see there the enemies left to spawn after five seconds increases as the wave goes on so now we're on wave three this should get a lot harder you can see we now have 18 enemies to kill and you can see these are slowly coming in like well not slowly they're coming in quite quickly but you'll see here, obviously, we can now decrease all the stats for our enemies to bring them back to normal. So the enemies per second, we want to put 0 0.5 um, and the enemy speed. Oh, the enemy speed. Let's turn off the bug mode and now go back to normal. We want to put this to something like two again. You're probably going to want to tweak all these attributes as well along here and here because these will probably change and you'll probably want to mess around with a lot but guys that's going to be it for this video i hope you've learned something new we now have a wave spawner to spawn all our enemies into our game and it will continuously get harder and harder as each wave goes on now we have done the enemy spawner the next thing is to add in the enemy turret or sorry the your buildings or towers which are going to be our turrets that will shoot down the enemies um, and actually destroy them now we're going to have different turrets multiple different turrets and different ways of buying them with currency but to start with we're just going to start with a standard shooting turret that will just shoot down the enemies at a certain range and speed and you'll be able to upgrade these turrets later on but we're going to start basic in the next video by just starting off by creating a turret that can face and turn towards the enemy but that's it for this one i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and i will see you in the next one peace out